In 1999, Tim Hudson made his debut as an athletic. For six seasons, Hudson was a big piece of the success in Oakland. Fast forward to 2014 when Hudson joined the Giants and captured his first World Series title. Rookie Kendall Graven is making a name for himself in 2015 as a solid part of the athletics rotation. Graven can only hope to mirror the career of Hudson. Today, in the final installment of the Bay Bridge Series, the veteran and the rookie square off. A's, Giants, next. San Francisco, beautiful day for baseball. It's the Bay Bridge Series. Interesting pitching matchup. Tim Hudson, the veteran for the Giants. Kendall Graben, the youngster for the Athletics. And the A's trying to salvage the final game of this series. It's the Oakland A's and the San Francisco Giants coming up on Comcast Sportsnet California. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's with baseball along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. So interesting indeed, the matchup. Kendall Grayman, a rookie. Yeah. Tim Hudson in his 17th year in Ray. Long time ago, Tim Hudson was a young That's guy right. with a great sinker, kind of like Kendall Grayman. And I think what's interesting, Cop, is that Kendall Grayman went to AAA and talked to one of the big three, and that was <laughs> Barry Zito, as we know. And now he's facing one of them today, but Kendall Grayman, since coming back, has done a very, very good job. But he's facing a guy who would love to beat the A's, his former team, because that's the only one he has never beaten throughout his major league career. He has announced, basically, he's retiring at the end of the season. So I'm sure if he doesn't win today, he's hoping the next time the A's and the Giants face each other. But you have a youngster and you have a veteran. Two guys, pretty good pitchers. And you have the A's struggling right now, and the Giants are hot. So the A's will try to turn that around this afternoon here at AT&T Park. When we come back, we'll have lineups and first pitch. Baybridge Series, it's the A's and Giants. Stick around. is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Get the new steak and egg breakfast burrito at Jack in the Box. It's not your basic breakfast burrito. And by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. 
We are set for baseball here in San Francisco. Game time weather presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is now open daily. It's a beautiful day. Plenty of sunshine. And the temperature is sitting at 65 degrees with just a nice light breeze. No cooler temperatures, but sunny and comfortable as the first pitch of the ball game. Hudson to Burns is a little bit low. So we're underway. Third and final game of this series here in San Francisco. He's looking for a W. Burns slaps him toward shallow left center field. Blanco comes racing in and Blanco caught it. So defense is how this game starts. A very nice play by Gregor Blanco in left field. He kind of came speeding out of nowhere. Well, it looked like it was going to drop, but uh, kind of no man's land. But out of nowhere, here he came. A nice sliding catch. Kept the glove close to the ground right there with the palm up. The smoke comb popped up a little bit once it hit the ground and his glove, but kept it in the glove. So from a defensive standpoint and a pitcher standpoint, great way to start a game for Tim Hudson. So one out, and here's Steven Vogt. There's pitch to vote. There's the hard sinker from Tim Hudson. Which we've seen for what 17 years now, right? That's yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen Vogt said, I want Kendall Graven to get the same pitch because that's a sinker down. Yesterday it wasn't called a strike, at least in the early part of the game from Joe West. Kerwin Danley behind the plate, and he's not feeling well. There was some talk. Eddie Montague said that Joe West might be behind the plate in back to back games, but that is not the case. There is a veteran crew chief, Joe West. A little bit inside. Vote 278 with 14 homers, 58 RBIs. He's 0 for 5 in this series. Was not in the lineup yesterday, but hit in the ninth inning and grounded out as pinch hitter. Back behind the plate today. Right at panic from the grass to away. Here's a look at the ace lineup for today. Burns, Vogt, Zobrist, Reddick, Davis, Laurie, Sogard, Simeon, and then the pitcher, Graven. Uh, Tim Hudson, uh, he has announced this is the last season. Matter of fact, talking to him yesterday, he said, if I could pitch every 10 days, it'd be great. Because it just seems like he's, he's trying to, to pitch. He's thrown a lot of innings throughout his career, came into the season with the most wins by an active pitcher, 214. So quite an accomplished major league career for Tim Hudson. Started with the A's and out of Auburn University, a great center fielder when he was not pitching because he could hit. It's probably what uh, encouraged him to sign with the the Giants after leaving Atlanta. The A's also were trying to sign him, re-sign their ace pitcher. Facing Ben Zobrist, who's had a very good series, four for seven. A single, a double, a triple, and a homer in the series. I can't believe Bruce Bochy wouldn't give up the number 15 for a couple of years, you know, Tim Hudson's number, so Bochy wouldn't give it up. Nope. <laughs> so he goes to the number 17. So he's just happy to be here. He got his first world championship last year. Now Hudson was a sixth round draft pick back in 1997. He had defense behind Hudson today. Blanco, Pagan, Pence in the outfield. Duffy Crawford panic belt on the infield posey should catch her. So same defense same lineup all three games in this series for Bruce Bochy. He likes to do that if he can. No two pitch to Zobrist is rolled foul. Hudson with 219 career wins. 219 and 132. With the A's, terrific. 92 and 39. Six seasons with the A's, nine with the Braves, and you know, the second season with the Giants. You can imagine a three game series, and you come in to face the A's, Hudson Mulder Zito. That was going to be a tough series for the opposition. Uh, be happy with one, huh? Yeah. Be happy. I mean, when I say one, I mean one win, mm -hmm. if you were lucky. Still has a very good split finger fastball does not throw as hard as he once did but uh, he knows how to pitch and what veteran status means PV starting the series Tim Hudson and Bumgarner of course the star in between runs off the plate two and two the count Hudson now 40 years old wrapping it up 
The winner yesterday. Pretty good hitter. As Chris Bassett found out. There's a shot to left and a base hit. Fastball that was up and away, and Zobra stays hot. It's his fifth hit in the series. Out of San Diego, Tim Hudson struck out 11. He had the nasty splitter, but the most impressive thing, almost like Catfish Hunter's perfect game, in which he loved to hit. Tim Hudson got a base hit. Watch him around first base. He said, I'll go for two. And then he came back around. He said, no, I, 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 I think I'll stop. Parents in town and so it was a, a good night for him and a great career for him. First pitch to Reddick. Was over scoring. Throw to second base. Is there and they got him. Very fine throw by Posey as Zobrist is thrown out trying to steal, and that's how the top of the first comes to an end. So Kendall Graveman is headed for the mound to see if he can shut down the Giants. No score after half an inning. It's the same. Pagan Panic Duffy, Posey Pence Belt, Crawford Blanco, and Hudson against the young right hander. Now Kendall Graveman shut out uh, at least part of his seven innings of a shutout baseball against the Mariners, but the last two starts have not been as well. Cleveland and Toronto. So facing the Giants and maybe thinking about putting a bat in his hand, but Kendall Graveman, good stuff. Six and six record, sub four earned run average. And I would say that the guy on the other side, where number 17, his mentor, and growing up in a similar area, Kendall Grayman, if he could pitch like Tim Hudson, which he's capable of doing, good sinking fastball, he does not have the split that Huddy throws. Kendall Grayman is a ground ball pitcher, as he has exhibited in several of his starts this year. Well, that's why his last start was so strange, where he gave up three home runs, yeah. which it's just not. What you're used to with Kendall Graven. And it's low and now 3 0 to Pagan. Pagan is 3 for 8 in the series. He scored a run. He's knocked in a run. He's also walked. And the 3 0 pitch right in there for a strike. Pretty good movement even on the 3 0 pitch and that's good that you can throw it in case the hitter might be swinging instead of just a four seam get me over fastball. So the same pitch maybe get a ground ball for the first out. Swing and a miss. Good pitch there. A little movement down and in. I've got a cutter that he throws and. It go into the hitter instead of away as the 3 0 pitch did. So he can go either way now. Just want to keep the ball down. That's the main thing. And that one just a touch low. So Pagan's aboard. His defense looks like this today. 
Zobrist in left, Burns is back in there in center, then Reddick in right, Maury, Simeon, Sogard, Davis on the infield, and Stephen Bowie is your catcher. Bob Bellman trying to get the knees rolling. They've lost three in a row and lost four to five. He's now sitting at 44 and 55 on the season. They're 23 and 26 on the road. With the two game series at Dodger Stadium to come Tuesday and Wednesday. So, not an easy stretch right now for the Athletics. We have five consecutive games in National League Parks, and we have already seen the difference in the National League Parks, not so much in San Diego. Scott Kazmir got an RBI hit. He was winning both of those games, so it wasn't as important. But the pitchers have contributed for the Giants in the first two games of this series. One and one to panic with Duffy in the on deck circle. Dodgers have named their starter, so it's been in question a little bit, but it's going to be Brett Anderson on Tuesday, Clayton Kershaw on Wednesday. For the A's, it'll be Sonny Gray and Drew Pomerantz. So the A's will face a couple of left handers down at Dodger Stadium Tuesday night and Wednesday night. Pagan runs and the ball is bounced to Davis who backhands it. Stays fair and steps on the bag for the first out. Pagan now at second. Last couple of starts for Kendall Grayman. He has struggled. And he's on a great run since coming back from the minor leagues. But he lost in Cleveland and then at home to the Blue Jays. Giving up. 10 earned runs in 11 innings in those two starts, but still, he's been great since coming back from the minor leagues. He's 5 and 4 with a 2.76 ERA in 11 starts since coming back. With a nice play. 2 0, the count to Duffy with Posey to follow. What a hard slider cutter from Kendall Grayman outside. Stephen Vogt left the off day yesterday. As we mentioned, he needed it after working so hard on Friday night. Taking a ball off his right hand, trying to block several in the dirt, which he did successfully. And that one is belted. Left field and deep. Zobrist is going to look up, and Duffy has homered, and the Giants take a 2 0 lead. Well, Russell Martin hit a 2 2 cutter for a three run home run, and that's exactly what Duffy did. See it? But a pitcher drops his elbow. Pitch is elevated, and that's the result. A hanger, and right in the middle of the plate. And this is exactly what Kendall Grayman has not wanted to be doing because he did not do it before his last two starts. But boy, that has happened twice before his last start. He had given up two home runs in the game, only twice. Last time three, and this time a big one. For Duffy, his ninth home run, he now has 45 RBIs. Well, lead off walk and a two run home run. Not a good combination, and it was two walks in front of Russell Martin's three run home run. He hit in his last start uh, when the Blue Jays were in town. A one or two to Posey hitting 320, 14 homers and 67 RBIs. For pitcher Tim Hudson, who has never defeated the Athletics, the only team he has not defeated in his major league career, it's a pretty good start for him. It's a caught stealing after a base hit, and then a two run home run in the bottom of the inning. So now the count three and two. 
Well, I would imagine Tim Hudson is very aware that the oh, Leafs yeah. are the only team right. he has not defeated. I mean, that's a pretty cool thing to be able to say. I mean, I defeated every team yeah. when I pitched. Still got some work to do today. Three two pitch hit up the middle, and that's a base hit. Pitchers to defeat all 30 current major league teams. How about that? We got the beat. Randy Johnson inducted to Cooperstown this year. On the left side, of course, Barry Zito with the A's, part of the big three, down in the lower right corner. Good names on that list. Kyle Osh. Still pitching. So here's Pence. Ball drops low. You know, all those players are post free agency. <laughs> Anybody That's before right. pitch for the same club pretty much. And uh, so there's always going to be that one club that you can beat right, your, own. your own. And so Tim Hudson had faced the A's before, but had not defeated them. And he got knocked around last year yeah. by the A's right here in this ballpark. 2 0 to Pence. So Graveman. Not sharp early. Well, that one not close, and now it's three and zero. Oh. Giants come in fifty three and forty four, and they have won four in a row. They have won ten out of eleven. They trail the Dodgers by two in the West. They are currently the second wild card team in the National League. Pirates and the Giants, the two wildcard teams right now. And the 3 0 pitch is hot. Yeah, Kurt Young's yeah, probably going to have to take a slow walk to the mound. Something he did not want to have to do in the first inning. So 22 pitches. And one out recorded so far here in the first inning. It was in this park in the Bay Bridge series back at the end of March that Kendall Graveman made his first start in this area. And basically did not fare well then made his major league debut in Oakland against the Rangers on the 9th of April did not fare well there. And was sent to the minor leagues and. I guess one thing that Barry Zito told him was about adversity and things that happen at the major league level and that everything is not always going to be great and. Kendall Graveman found that out in the game here as well as at the Coliseum. And had a great experience talking to Zito when he went to AAA. I mean, he just rolled through the Arizona part of spring training. Did not walk a batter all spring. On one to Belt. Belt is three for eight in the series with three RBIs. And he's got another opportunity here. So a walk, ground out, homer, single walk. We're in the bottom of the first. One off the plate outside, and now the count two and one. Yeah, but sometimes a pitcher can have too much movement on the fastball, and you're seeing right now with Graveman, he even started with Pagan, the first hitter, three and zero, oh, then three and one, got to three and two with a good cutter, and then the sinker out of the strike zone. Timeout call, big shift on for Belt. The three infielders on the right side, all on the infield dirt, looking for a double play ball. And that one is rolled foul. So two and two. Bottom of the first for Kendall Graveman. And Belt with a line drive.
drive center field base hit. They're going to wave Posey home. He will score without a throw, and it's 3 nothing. So, again, it's really a hitter just not trying to do too much. Ball moving away from Belt. And he hit it toward left center field. Had a good two strike approach and not a bad pitch. It went away. And actually down, maybe even out of the strike zone, considering what Kerwin Danley is calling this afternoon. See a little shift. They expect him to hit the ball to the right side. Still saying when you get two strikes on a hitter, his approach changes. And while early in the count, they might get overly aggressive and pull a pitch that's outside, but when they get two strikes, and we've seen it in the series, hitters will take the pitch and hit it where it is pitched. So here's Crawford. Crawford rolls one to Davis, who Cannot make the play. Sogard cannot pick it up clean on a dive, and everybody's safe. Davis dove for it. Sogard did the same, kind of went into a slide. Neither of them could come up with it. So now the bases are loaded. Well, good effort, but Sogard a lot of times will spin and come up with the ball and make the throw, but not this time. So Kendall Graveman, who is kind of looking forward to hitting, he might not get a chance to hit as the bullpen is busy already. Daniel Otero is the right hand of reliever. So Blanco steps in. Four hits, two walks so far in the first. Blanco swings and misses. One for six in the series. Pence at third, Belt at second, Crawford at first. And a pretty good pitch, called the ball. It's not about sinker ball pitchers in the past that when an umpire does not give or call the low strike, it makes it a lot harder on a pitcher because he has to elevate the pitches. And it's always a negative for a pitcher when that happens. And that is a foul ball. Home plate umpires call, and Kerr and Danley made the call, lifted up both arms, meaning foul ball. So now Grayman ahead in the count. Yeah, the right foot's on the line, and I guess where the ball was caught, and where Mike Davis did catch the ball. That would have been a nice, easy out and maybe even a double play, but did not happen. Cannot argue. The ball was in front of the, the umpire. So one and two the count. And a foul tip and held on by vote. So a huge strikeout for Graveman. For the second out. Well, one of the higher pitches that he threw and has thrown so far in this first inning, and happens to be one that he gets a big strikeout. So panic and out, the second hitter on a hit and run. So now Hudson. And that one runs inside to Hudson, 1 and 0. 33 pitches for Graben here in the first. In the first strike. Hudson, three singles and a double for his four hits this year. 19 balls, 16 strikes. And that got Stephen Vogt. <laughs> Might as well get it already, Stephen. Get it out of the way. Or at least the first one. One of many, more than likely. So Graveman trying to limit the damage. Three runs in. And now two and two. So as Ray mentioned, Hudson not a bad hitter. That's what he'll do is he will give you a pretty good at bat for a pitcher. 
And that one in for a strike, and Graveman allows three, but quite frankly, could have been worse. So he strikes out Blanco and Hudson, and the bases are left loaded. But the Giants score three and lead 3 0. Podcast is brought to you by T-Mobile. Mark Simone from San Leander with Stopper. That was in Cincinnati at the All-Star Game. There to check out Sonny Gray and Stephen Vogt. So Reddick steps in. Reddick was up there when Zobrist was thrown out. Trying to steal. So a shutdown inning opportunity for Tim Hudson. He has not been great at that this year. And it's a quick 2-0 to Reddick. Davis to follow and then Laurie here in the second. Reddick one for five in the series. It's this one in the air. And foul, one bounce into the seats. Reddick was one for four on Friday night, and then yesterday he was a pinch hitter in the ninth inning and grounded out. One thing you learn quickly as a hitter against uh, someone, Jake Peavy on Friday night, Tim Hudson today, both right handers, both similar style of pitches, where they'll not give in when they're behind in the count. And that was proof there, even 3 0 lead. And that one, line the other way, fair ball. So it'll be a leadoff double for Reddick. Nice job of hitting. He just went right with it. Josh Reddick got a better pitch to hit on the 2 and 1. Than he did on the 2 and 0, which is usually the difference. But fastball down and away. And if Kerwin Danley is going to call those or not, that's a pretty good pitch to go exactly the way he has been hitting this season using the opposite field. And once again, Josh Reddick does it and says a lot about how many 26 to the opposite field, left field. But the A's, again, we've talked about it many times. You get this early in the game, it would be a gift run if they can get into third. Less than two outs and try to get him in because these are important runs to get. Panic's going to have to hurry. He throws to first and they get Ike Davis, but Davis moves Reddick over to third. So a productive out for Ike Davis. And this with the infield is going to play back. And there's only two spots pitcher and maybe third base where Brett Lloyd does not want to hit the ball. Otherwise, on the ground, in the air, deep enough. But a run to get on the board and make that uh, shutdown inning even worse for Tim Hudson. First pitch to Lori. Off of Posey. Going to be a close play at the plate, but not in time as Reddick slides in. So the A's will take it. 
Ball skipped away from Posey, and then he tried to flip it, kind of a, a no look flip to Hudson. And it was late. So it's three to one. And a pretty good flip by Posey, put it on the plate, but the hard slider in the dirt tried backhanding was Posey, and this the, the backhand. And Tim Hudson, very good athlete, he was there, but it was a little bit late, so aggressive base running. Secondary lead by Josh Reddick to take advantage of a really ball that was not that far away from Buster Posey. So the 1 0 pitch to Lori is hit well the center, but Pagan backs up and he makes the catch. Two outs. And that'll bring up Sogar. Brett Laurie with the wild pitch. He looks, he sees Josh Reddick coming, and it's we're been watching the highlights of Brandon Phillips of the Reds with the behind the back through the legs. And Brett Laurie getting out of the way to not obstruct anything happening at the plate. Oh. So guard 249. No home runs. 21 runs batted in. Hitting in the seventh spot today. And that one off the foot. And Sogard will limp that one off. And the slider in. Ouch. Inside of the ankle. Be different colors by what? The yeah. Bottom of the second inning. <laughs> Take long. <laughs> Left center. Pagan on the move. He'll get there. Side retired. So a run. Reddick double scores on a wild pitch. So we're going to the bottom of the second. Giants three. He's one. Together building a better California. Nice day in the Bay Area. Two Bay Area teams squaring off. Mentioned the trip to Dodger Stadium, but then the A's are right back home and starting Thursday, an 11 game homestand. Mm -hmm. so that's something to look forward to, certainly. Top of the order for the Giants as they batted around in the oh. bottom of the first to score their three runs. Well, right now, the only thing that might get Kendall Grayman exiting this game early would be the pitch count. A lot of pitches in the first inning, 37, quickly 0 2, so he needs to minimize the number of pitches and 
to not give up any more runs. And three is really not that much to overcome. That's a good looking shirt. Covering everything. Yeah. 1974 World Series. There's a base hit center field. So the Giants right back at it. Four hits in the first inning. So there's that homestand starting Thursday. Four against the Cleveland Indians, three against the Baltimore Orioles, and then four against the Houston Astros. So we'll be home for a nice long time. There's the Astros and the Angels tied for first place in the AL West. Those two teams are going to square off this week. The Angels will be in Houston for a three game series Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And that's become a series to look forward to. Those two teams have nine games left against each other the Angels and the Astros. The team the Astros are playing the Royals this weekend. Yep. Just made a major trade as the trading line did a lot of approaches on Friday. Johnny Cueto of the Reds. Bantered around, mentioned as uh, one of the potential rental players, since he's going to be a free agent. He's now loyal. Indeed. So Johnny Cueto, Reds to the Royals, getting back for Cincinnati. Brandon Finnegan, John Lamb, and Cody Reed. Finnegan's a good pitcher. Yep. Well, all three of those guys, Ray, are all three left-handed pitchers. Well, Finnegan, that's uh, he was. They got quite a bit considering he is a rental player. It's, so that may be one of those trades that works out well for both because the Royal I mean as great a season as the Royals are having and they have the best record in the American League they needed another starter and they got a very good one Johnny Cueto. I read a note today Ray where the the Royals starters the fewest innings pitched in the American League this year. Because Ned Yosh has the best bullpen. <laughs> True, and that probably does. Yeah. Have a well, but he would like to see them go deeper because that you eventually wear them down as good as they are. Herrera, Davis, and Holland, very good back three. But I, you know, in a case like that, starters probably say we only have to go six. I mean, we're only going to get to go six, so why worry about it? But last year you had Shields as kind of your yeah. your anchor. You had your Donna Ventura, a nice number two, but Ventura's struggling. And Shields is gone. Runner going. Sogard will pick it up. And panic is retired, but Pagan to second. So that's the big trade of the day, though. Johnny Cueto going to the Kansas City Royals. From the hanging cutter. And again, if you know we've got the great X more. If you could watch the elbow of Kendall Graveman, it really says it all because. When that elbow drops and you push a ball, that's the result. It, it stays up and it's a great pitch, the cutter, sinker, when they're down. And the elbow is right, there we go again. Right field, the base hit, and that'll get a run home. And Matt Duffy has a three RBI game. Now watch the elbow of Kendall Graham. We're talking about the Duffy home run in the first inning. It's a it's a two -oh cutter, but if you can watch the elbow, typically it's down, and then it kind of push the ball. Otherwise, it's down and away, but it stays up, and that's why a cutter, which if it's down and away, you might get a rollover and get a ground ball. It stays up. You're going to get elevated, and Daniel Terrell, second consecutive inning, actually second consecutive inning that Padon has reached. Panic hit and run twice a ground out. Duffy a home run in the first inning. And this inning, RBI single right field. So the A's pick up one, make it a two run game, and then right back to down by three again. So the hitter will be Posey. The A's do have an off day tomorrow, but. Bass hit six innings yesterday, but the bullpen Thursday, Friday, used a lot. First pitch to Posey, a strike on the outside corner. Oh, no. And 
in the dirt. Vote digs it out. I think if there would be an award giving for a series on most blocks and best technique of blocking balls, the A's would win it hands down. Faklin Vogt done a great job, but that's on one hand good on their part, but not good on the pitcher's part. It's bouncing too many pitches in front of the plate. Posey, a base hit to center field. Duffy around second, he'll stop there. That's it. Melvin's coming out. He's not even. I don't think he's going to stay with him, and he's not. And he's also going to make a double switch, yeah. which you generally will make a double switch if the pitcher that yeah. you're bringing in, you're going to want him to go multiple yeah. innings. And that's exactly what's happening. So, Sogard was the last hitter. That's possible. We'll see. And that is Canna going in. So Canna's going to go to left. Zobris is probably going to come in and play second. We guess, although well, actually, maybe not. Well, that we'll let you know. Yeah. How about that? Otero coming in when it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and tune up. It's your oil change tune up and smog experts. Day. We have up seven hits in all four runs. Two guys out there. So Dan Otero will try to do his best to keep this close. Four to one. Two on one out for Pence. 27th appearance for Otero. First pitch to Pence. Sinker just a little bit low. Before joining the athletics, we'll tell you about the defense first with Cannon now in left field and Zobers coming in from left to second. So Sogard is out on the double switch. Canna is hitting in the ninth spot. Lori has it. Fires to second for one, back to first. Got him. Double play. So nicely done by Dan Otero. Close play at first. Are they going to check it? We'll see. And I'm not quite sure if they're going to check it or not. No, he just said no. Kermit Danny just waved to Joe West and said no. I didn't think it was even close, to be honest, when, when it happened. So the double play, one run for the Giants.
Titans leaders, Tim Hudson, sitting on top with his 219 career wins. Cologne second, Sabathia third, Burley, Burnett, and Lackey. So my question, will there be another 300-game winner? Because oh that, that, that list is... Uh, it's going to be a while. Well, and again, I think we talked when CC Sabathia was pitching against the A's that he was the one that people predicted who might, but he's fallen off a little bit. Well, nobody on that list is going to get there. No. Simeon, Canna, and Burns here in the third. And there's a strike to the one account. I think that's a pitch that down in the strike zone that Kendall Graveman would have gotten a couple of those. Might have been a different story for him, but bottom line, he elevated too many pitches like that one from Tim Hudson. Rangers are leading the Angels two to one. That game in the fourth inning down in Anaheim. Texas playing much better as of late. They've won four in a row. Angels have lost three in a row. The Rangers trying to make a little move in the wild card standings. Sometimes you need a bat boy. In this case, a Batman. It's any good. He can do it all. To pitch roll fine. That was a good story about Marcus Simeon. Is our can is now in the ninth spot. He'll be hitting behind Marcus Simeon. But for Simeon to get a chance to play yesterday and having I mean, grown up in the area and watched all the Giants games here, watched the A's and the Giants in both parts. But his uh, comments about getting a chance to play on this park where he watched the whole games. <laughs> <laughs> that was interesting. That Joe West wanted to check the baseball, and Tim Hudson took it back as if to say, I can't believe you would do that, Joe. <laughs> kind of snatched it. <laughs> it's, it's, it was a foul ball, mate. If it went back in, I was always going to check it, but there's one Hall of Famer that uh, never liked to have baseballs checked by anybody. <laughs> Joe West, let me see it. And watch Tim Hudson get it back. Yeah, thank you, Joe. <laughs> Down the first baseline foul. Usually, it's usually the home plate umpire who yeah. does that. But Joe, the crew chief, just wants to make sure that everything's on the up and up. Can't tell who Joe's looking at because he's wearing sunglasses. Roll five. Although Joe West, he's closing in on a milestone. How about this? Today he is umpiring career game number 4,768. He ties Tommy Connolly, third most games umpired in Major League history. So congratulations to Joe. Bruce Fremming is second. Bill Clem is third on that list. So Joe's been around a long time. Third most games umpired in baseball history. That one's going to stay fair as Bell picks it up, steps on the ball. So I guess you could say Joe West has seen it all or close to it. I was thinking yesterday, a crew, the, the, the best crew that you could put together. I was thinking of Bob Davidson and Joe West, too. And add two more to that wonderful crew. That would be, that would one that you'd really like to see. Who did you say? Joe West and Bob Davidson. How about that couple together? And then add two more. Let's try to figure out the <laughs> Angel Hernandez, that's a good one. And, and maybe uh, Laz Diaz. <laughs> oh, Greg Gibson. Yeah, that's a good one to learn. I think. <laughs> well, there is a some type of grading system that. Allows the umpires to get to the postseason. Uh, there are times where we'd love to see that grading system. The, uh, that Joe, you know, Joe West is a crew chief. Of course, the crew chiefs are, are different. They have to be with different crews, obviously. You can't have 
four Michael Jordans on the same team. <laughs> or four Joe West on the same team. Jordan West. <laughs> One and one the camp. And I would like to have Sandy Alderson leading all of them. <laughs> that changed the umpiring world severely. And Sandy was major league baseball in charge of the umpires. Canna hits one high in the air. Got under it. And Blanco has it two outs. So Cannon now in the game flies out in his first at bat, and that'll bring up Billy Burns. Four to one, the Giants lead. They scored three in the first, one in the second, and he's got their run in the second. Inning. Astros lost today. The Royals beating five to one. First pitch, Blanco in, playing shallow already. He's got it. That's a three up, three down inning for Tim Hudson. Bottom of the third coming up. Giants four, A's one. By Real Strong Redwood. Why Redwood? Visit realstrongredwood.com. Be careful. Don't speed down Lombard Street. <laughs> really, it's, it's really, you can only go so fast. The extreme long man, Dan Otero, very capable of doing that. I'm going to see. In spring training against the Giants in Scottsdale, he had an unbelievable outing. He just kept getting outs after outs, and big double play last inning on the ground ball by Pence to get out of the inning, limit the Giants to just one in the second inning, down four to one now to the A's. So, the definition of a long man, try to give your club a chance to come back, keep the other team from scoring, and that's what Dan O'Terrell will try to do. Belt Crawford and Blanco here in the bottom of the third. I think what Bob Melvin did, Kurt Young, the pitching coach, they, they think about today's game. They know the bullpen's been spent, but they also know that every day is the type of game you want to try to win. And you don't think about the future. And you just have to realize that if a pitcher doesn't have it, you don't want to leave him out there and give up a bunch to where your offense has no chance to come back. So looking at one of the toughest decisions for a manager. Well, the, as we said, the A's will have tomorrow off, but then starting Tuesday, they will play 22 games in 23 days. So that is the stretch that's coming up.
2 2 pitch. Drops outside. Full count. Payoff pitch to Belt. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Stayed with an off speed pitch. Belt did such a good job his first at bat taking this pitch. The outfield looked like he's trying to pull it. It was running away from him. Out of the strike zone. Might have been ball four. So good pitch by Dan Otero to get the strike out. So two batters, three outs for Otero. It's very good. So that'll bring up Crawford. Crawford had a base hit in the first inning. Down the left field line, but it's going to go foul. These are still in this game, and quite frankly, it could be a lot worse. Yeah. Giants had the bases loaded and one out in the first inning, and Graveman struck out Blanco and Hudson. And then in the second inning, Giants hit first and second, one out. Otero got the double play. And a quick 0 2 to Crawford. Crawford three for nine in the series. In the dirt. Bolt knocks it down, rolls away just a little bit. Blue Jays leading the Mariners four to two in the third inning up in Seattle. Burley and Walker, the pitching matchup there. Mark Burley going for his 12th win of the year. That's a base hit to left field. So that pitch was up and right out over the plate. So Crawford gets his second hit. And that's eight hits now for the Giants. And if Belt had tried to do the same thing, it probably would have resulted in another hit. Two strikes, and again, the two strike approach has been outstanding in this series. So Blanco steps in for his second at bat. As we just mentioned, he struck out with the bases loaded in the first. Glory, step onto the grass at third. Toward left, Canna toward the line, and Canna makes the catch in fair territory. Two outs. And now Tim Hudson will hit. Well, on one hand, Tim Hudson wants to beat the A's for the only team that he's never defeated. He had to also be thinking about. Kendall Graveman, two young pitchers or two pitchers from Alabama. That's a shot, and it's going to be fair. Crawford hits the bag at second. He's digging for third, and they're going to hold him up. Wow. So Canna dug it out of there quickly, and Hudson with the double, second and third, two outs. Pitch was elevated and Tim Hudson struck out on a pitch that the breaking ball from Kendall Grayman backed up. This time, though, jumped on the first offering and can a very good job getting the ball back in. Crawford, I'm a little surprised that he didn't score, or at least he was not sent. Two out hits are always hard to come by and see if the Giants can do it. So Pagan steps in. He has walked, singled, and scored twice. And they got a pitch to hit, fouled it to the screen. Pagan's had a good series. Four for nine with a couple of walks. And that one just a bit outside, even the count at one and one. Outfield shifted a little bit toward the left center. And that one hit in the air toward 
left center. Burns back. And Burns makes the catch, so Otero gets out of it. Giants strand a pair. Fourth inning coming up. It's 4 1 San Francisco. Four gentlemen going in today. Randy Johnson, Pedro Martinez, John Smoltz, and Craig Biggio. So four terrific, three terrific pitchers and one terrific position player. So congratulations to those four. Very deserving, all four of them. Three pitchers and Carlos Biggio, 3,060 hits. Played three different positions, starting out as a catcher. And quite an accomplishment for the first ever Astro. Johnson with the Diamondbacks. This Pedro went in as what Red Sox, probably. I think so. I think Red Sox, not, yeah. Absolutely Most sure. Most with the Braves. So all gave great speeches today. So a great note on Randy Johnson. Randy Johnson, of course, great years in Seattle and then a little time in Houston. Then he signed the free agent contract with the Diamondbacks. He signed a four-year deal. We always talk about, well, what, what are the best free agent signings of all time, which certainly you could argue that over and over. But Randy Johnson, a four-year deal with Arizona. He won the Cy Young all four years <laughs> of that deal. Yeah. That's not bad. In a world championship yeah. and... Uh, Pitched on back to back days in the World Series. So, all good things. He went in as a diamond back. There was some question about 11 years playing for the Seattle Mariners. Ken Griffey Jr., of course, will be the first inducted next year, first ballot. Toward right, Pence over, and it's into that sweep down the right field line. But since this is the Hall of Fame weekend, I thought it was interesting. Bob Melvin, how about that? He owned it. Big oh. Big time. I'm sure in Seattle, Mike Blowers is gloating as well. <laughs> Nine for 16 against him. That was probably because that before that back foot slider, the right handers came into play. <laughs> Bo Mel got him early in the count. How about That's that? That's right. Good idea. But the lineup sheets that we get on a daily basis for both the A's and the Giants, they have the Hall of Famers listed. I was looking and said, Ricky Henderson? Oh, he's retired. But as it turns out, they're all in caps and they're all Hall of Famers, both the A's and the Giants. So, a very nice touch over the weekend with uh, all the Hall of Famers on both teams. It really is kind of a nice idea. Yeah. I mean, going to another city and yeah, it's got a curiosity and see who their Hall of Famers are. Yeah, I'd have to ask uh, your brother, Kurt, to see if they do this on a on a regular basis, but you know, this just happens to be the halt they do. Thank you, B.I. We just found out. But it's a it's a nice touch because 
get an idea who are the ones who are retired and Hall of Fame. Broncos right there. Little Randy Johnson highlight. Remember this night, Ray? You were there. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he struck out a few batters. How about this? That's the one. And if there was not a roof on the King Dome, I mean, the bat, the ball left. We saw the sign said 115. He said he threw that ball that hard, but it was the ball coming off the bat of McGuire. That was at that speed of 115 miles an hour. And the greatest shot, though, you had two individuals who great pitcher, great hitter, yep. and McGuire just put his head down, got in the dugout, kind of went in a little walkway at the Oak Kingdom, and looked out. Randy Johnson looked at him, tipped his cap, and said, "Nice hit." And I sat in that booth for 11 years, waiting for that one shot. <laughs> the Hard fastball and the swing of Mac or Conseco or some of those guys and finally saw it. Yeah, well, Ben's over is hot. Yeah. Randy Johnson was he pitched a little angry. Oh yes. Yeah. Which is very scary. Well, the no hitter against the Tigers and Mike Heath was there. Well, probably about 115 miles an hour for the final strike and no hitter. Randy Johnson had a great quote this weekend. He said, I no longer have a fastball. I no longer have a mullet. <laughs> and I no longer have a scowl. <laughs> that's the cameraman yeah, that's in good. New York. That's good. That's right. <laughs> 2 0 to Reddick. Zobris now six hits in this series, six for nine. Oh. Randy from Livermore, no. California. And the angry you, you combine the angry Randy Johnson with the wild Randy Johnson. That's a bad combination if you're a hitter because he was wild. John Crook in the all star game turned his helmet around and <laughs> he classic was moment praying he wouldn't get hit. And that's when Johnson had control. Popped up. Pence didn't see it off the bat. Now he comes in. There's a high sky today here in San Francisco, and Reddick is retired. And Reddick just missed it, got under it, and the an fastball with a little movement. Reddick looked back at the the jumbotron center field to watch the swing, but watched a little bit of an uppercut. And you know, Josh says when he's not trying to hit home runs, that's when he does. That time he might have had a pitch he thought he could drive out. So with two outs, Ike Davis steps up. And the slider catches the outside corner. Davis grounded out back in the second inning. And just in case the A's get something going here with two outs, the pitcher spot is now the seventh spot, which is three hitters away. The one and one to count. 52 pitches for Hudson. His run came in the second on a double, a ground out, and a wild pitch. And that one's hit toward right center. Pence on the move. He's not going to get it. It's going to go all the way to the wall, and it bounces wow. into the wow. seats. Wow. And. Ground rule double. Boy, oh boy. That would have been a run, and I gave us not a real fast runner. I don't know if he would have got a triple, but it took a bounce and up into the center field seats. That hurt because that's a run, makes it four to two. Fastball. There it was. Now, Bob Elm is going to talk to Perwin Dallin. And it's off the brick wall there. And then into the seat, so it didn't bounce off of the warning track. It's a good point. What the ruling is on that, but bottom line, if it goes off the warning track into the seats, but that really caromed off the wall into the seat, so maybe that is the difference in the ground rules in this park. I hope they could see that it did hit on that. Oh, 
Well, see if the fan reaches over and how much he does reach over to get the ball. He's yeah. Well, a lot of things to question, so they're going to take a look at it. We'll see and find out what Bob Millman is challenging. So they will take a look at it. Let's see if the fa the, the fan like reaches out. Let's yeah. see if he indeed touches it. So off the wall, the guy the guy in the gray shirt right there reaches. He hits it. And he and did he touch it a little bit. Yeah. And knocks it down towards the other fan, and would it have been on this side of the green rail if it would have hit that and come back into play versus the fans getting it. And stay looked at it, and it's going to be second and third. So that 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 is a costly situation for the Athletics. Joe West wants an explanation. Yeah, he's going to. He can't go out and argue, but he can ask for an explanation. That's what Joe West has given. And the way Joe West just indicated with the hand down. Indicating that the ball was going to go in the seats in it. And now here's an interesting situation with Laurie coming up, and the pitcher spot is in the on deck circle. First base is open. We're not saying that. Well, Billy Butler's in the on deck circle no. already. No. And the one thing I asked Darren Bush about that from the hitter standpoint of a an eighth place hitter in front of a pitcher, and let's say Graveman is still in the game, he said, but the pitcher has to be concerned if there's a, a pinch hitter that comes in for the pitcher. You have to still pitch to him anyway. So one and oh to Lori. So an opportunity for the A's here. For some odd reason, it feels like the deficit is bigger than four to one. But the A's are still in this game. It's only the fourth inning. The hit here would be huge. And now it's two and oh. And I think from Bob Melman's standpoint, he's looking at the numbers for Rick Lori with two out numbers in score position, but Bob Melvin is just telling Bruce Boach and the Giants, Billy Butler is in the on deck circle. It's not put a pitcher out there and oh, maybe uh, I don't know who I'm going to send up. So they're pretty much saying, who are you going to pitch to? Brett Laurie, first base open, or Butler in the on deck circle? Looks like Butler. Scribner. Start to ramp up a little bit. Well, the Giants have stranded six in the first three innings. And that probably has Bruce Bochy a little bit concerned. The so, yeah, pitch is in there for a strike. I don't think that ball was going to go in the seats whether that fan touched it or not. It's a home run into the park here. It's a ground little double. And there's a base hit right field. They're going to sand Dyke Davis. No, they're not. They'll hold him. It's an RBI single, and now it's four to two. So justice prevails. The A's get the run anyways. Well, nice job of hitting by Brent Lorry, just flipping the ball to right field. Maybe hit a little bit too hard. Got the slider three and one. An excellent job of hitting, so that's why his numbers are excellent with two outs and runners in score position. But you see Roberto Kelly he held up Crawford looking for a two out hit. Mike Gallego had no choice because Mike Davis can't run. I mean, he just does not have the speed for Mike Gallego to normally send him in that case. Well, the Giants' long man, Rosemary Petit, starts to throw. So Butler hits. And the first pitch is a strike. And once he had to pull Hudson in the World Series last year, relatively early. Of course, he went to the MVP, Madison Bumgarner, and he settled everything down and got the job done in game seven. Runner goes, and Butler rolls it foul past the Athletics dugout, so Lori will head back. Had it stolen too. Butler's three for eight in the series. Again, pinch hitting here. This is now the pitcher spot, the seventh spot. Scribner will be in.
Davis at third, Laurie at first. In and out of the glove by Posey, the catcher. So Butler get another shot. I don't know if they announce it or if they did make an announcement. If that was a challenge by Bob Melvin or was an umpire's review. Did not hear either. Didn't right? either. They didn't say they talked to time of it. Because it makes a big difference if, uh, if it's actually a challenge. Yeah. I bet the umpires looked at it on their yeah. own. Well, if they do that, then Bob Melvin still has his challenge. A drive down the right field line, and it is foul. Not by a lot. Heads up, young lady. She ended up with the baseball. Not a bad seat. Mm -hmm. The Butler trying to inch the A's a little bit closer. It's now four to two. And two pitches, a slider down and away. Outfield playing. Butler very deep. Reached four and fouled, so Butler spoils a pretty good pitch from Tim Hudson. Back in the second inning, wild pitch helped Reddick score. So between Posey and Hudson, do they, they try to throw the hard biting breaking ball again? A little bit different situation now. It was a three to nothing lead then, then three to one. So pitch number 65 coming up for Hudson, and he's had a work in this inning. Shallow center. And this one is caught by Panic. No, it's not. Run comes in to score. It's four to three. Pagan was playing extremely deep, and the A's took advantage as Panic was the one who almost caught it, could not come up with it. Well, great effort by Panic, and you're right, going well, very deep with Pagan. There's no chance for him to get to it. And Panic had it, and then as he hit the ground and rolled over, the ball dropped. And the Giants really a fortune because anybody besides Billy Butler, it would have been a double. But he got the first, and that was it. Rolling over, ball hit softly, and but he thought he had it, and then came out of his glove. So four hits in the inning, and the A's are right back in it. It's four to three. And three of those coming after two outs. A double RBI single RBI single. So now Simeon hits. And they were getting one out, but you would have to think that Tim Hudson, who was holding on to a one run lead, that if he doesn't get this out, he might not get a chance to pick up the win against the A's. Another hit somehow, the A's scoring the time again. Again, he pitched a no hitter on July the 4th, 1984. Not close to Simeon. It's a big save by Buster Posey. And tried to back end the ball that got by him when Reddick scored. And this time he had to back end the ball because Hudson overthrew it. Tim Hudson does not have a strikeout today. That one's hit toward Crawford, who handles a tough play. Flips to first side, retired. But the A's, with four hits and a couple of runs, they're right back in it. So, bottom of the fourth coming up. It's now four to three. Giants lead the A's.
on 9 is Farm Music Fireworks Night. It's presented by the Chevron Techron Advantage credit card this Friday, July the 31st. Fans can watch the postgame fireworks show from the outfield grass, but as always, on the field capacity is limited. Get your tickets today at athletics.com slash fireworks. I think we need to find out. 31st, the games will be playing the Indians. Will there be fireworks during the day and fireworks during the night? Because that is the trading deadline. <laughs> we shall see. It'll be an interesting week, that's for sure. Well, around baseball, it's going to be interesting because uh, a lot of clubs talking, a lot of scouts all over. I mean, it's almost like postseason when scouts yeah. arrive and start watching teams and scouting teams. And meanwhile, you know, Evan Scribner trying to keep it at a one run game. Yeah, Scribner, like Otero, becomes one of the long relievers. So when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change tune-up and smog expert. Scribner faces Panic, Duffy, and Posey here in the bottom of the fourth. So the A's have got themselves back in it. It's now just a 4-3 game. 0-2. Ball fouled straight back. Yeah, he's thinking Tim Flannery, the longtime third base coach for the Giants, retired after last year. Won a few world championships, but he was really, really aggressive. Roberto Kelly just seems kind of the opposite. I think in last inning, Crawford would have been a cent with two outs if, uh, I mean, it, it's one of those, and we've seen Mike Gago, the aggressiveness of a third base coach, sometimes it's kind of a thankless job. You get a guy thrown out, but it's hard to come up with back to back two out hits and Rocher was able to get Crawford out leaving runners at second and third and now it's a one run game. Mike Davis picks it up flips to Scribner and that's out number one. Tim Flannery one of the few third base coaches worth cleats. Mike Davis ball came up on him stayed with it. Good job, Scribner, covering because you hesitate at all. First base, first baseman will take as many as they can get, but the pitcher always has to be covering just in case. So one out. So Dan Otero, an inning and two thirds, gives up a couple of hits, but no runs. So nice job by Otero, keeping the game close. Duffy's had a big day, three RBIs, two run homer in the first, RBI single in the second. Good swing there, one on one. In the offseason, the Giants tried to hold on to Pablo Sandoval, but made some nice offers to him, but he decided he was going to go to the Red Sox for $95 million. And I would think the Giants are happy that he did not take their offer and he went to Boston. Pablo Sandoval has 30 RBIs and he's hitting 255. Mm -hmm. Matt Duffy's got 46 RBIs and he's making the minimum. Well, the Giants have been known to sign players after they've had success. Pablo had success here and I think back contracts of Michael Scudero, Aaron Rowan, two stand out that uh, the Giants ended up taking them, but this is a good deal. Duffy got the opportunity. And give him credit, especially the Giants' credit, giving him the opportunity, let him play and have success he is having. Oh. Giants have the sixth highest payroll in baseball this year. After this year, had a bunch of contracts expiring over 50 million dollars worth of contracts coming off the books. What a play by Scribner. How about that? Had it all the way. You see pitchers try this all the time and every once in a while it works. Well, it follows through puts his glove behind his back and the ball found the glove and may not like because that is a play that you can work on and work on and maybe one out of a hundred times it end up the glove at that time it did it probably shocked Scribner as much as anybody. But a good play. And we'll take it trying to get a one two three in it. Posey steps in takes outside Posey's two for two.
and he's five for nine in the series. And he shoots one down the right field line. Reddick's not going to get it. And Posey is going to try for two. And the throw is just a bit late. And Posey in with a double. Posey does not run very well. And Reddick had a shot. And Posey is three for three. Slice the ball down the line. And Smolenski yesterday played the carom perfectly. This one a little bit different carom off the wall for. Josh Reddick was still with his very strong arm. It kind of deadened when it hit the bottom part. Smolinski yesterday, ball hit hard, came back, and this throw just a little offline. But Ron Woda is talking on Friday night, the bench coach for the Giants. He looked out in right field on the warning track. They had the ropes, and fans were standing there. And Ron said, it makes it difficult if you want to have your outfielder play and practice caroms off the wall. They couldn't do it because the fans were there watching BP. Yesterday worked for Smolenski. This today tried for Reddick. His throw, while strong, a little bit offline. Pence swings at that curveball, misses it, so it's on two. I see how the ball just dies. He's wanted to play it hard, but it hit in the bottom where it's softer and padded. You get up a little bit higher where it's concrete. Right about the lower 10 feet that they have the pad, except for the, the wire part. The two pitched slowly hit Simeon charges his throw to first and they just got Pence on a close play side retired so another runner stranded for the Giants they've stranded seven through the first four innings four three after four. Two thousand and two, Tim Hudson shuts out the Giants at the Coliseum. Nine innings, five hits, no runs, three walks, one strikeout, 122 pitches, and the A's won it seven to nothing. So Tim Hudson, 92 wins as an Athletic, sixth on the all-time Oakland A's career win list. He was good. He showed him his major league debut, right? And he finished that rookie season 11 and 2. And he followed that up by the next year with his only 20 win season. It was 2000. He went 20 and 6. Unless Barry Zito comes back and wins at least 29 games for the A's, Catfish Hunter will remain at the top. The rest of the guys are out of retired. Won't have a chance. Zito's really. Hudson's retiring, but Zito is at Nashville. Had a great career. Tim Hudson has spent a lot of time with the Braves, got a chance to 
use his hitting ability pitching in the National League and probably one of the reasons he decided to sign with the Giants. There's a line drive and that's a hit. Well the A's are starting to swing it against Hudson. They had four hits in the fourth inning and a leadoff single here in the fifth. So you really kind of feel the momentum of this game shifting a little bit toward the A's. And left the ball up a little bit. The slider had been pitched for him working down and away. This one stayed up and Mark Canna using the opposite field center field and facing a right hander something that he's had a lot of success against. So now the top of the order in Burns. Duffy winning in on the grass. So vote to follow and then the red hot Ben Zobrist. So another opportunity here for the athletics. They were down three nothing. They were down four to one. Now it's four to three. That felt in petite now getting loose. Toward left. Blanco is playing shallow. He gets over there and he makes the catch. The burn says. And three fly balls to left field today. He's 0 for 3, and that'll bring up Vogt. Seen four pitches today. That's a lot. <laughs> so Vogt steps in. He has grounded out and hit a fly ball to left field. So 0 for 7 in the series. Play. It wasn't even Hudson's best move. There's seven hits now for the A's. Giants have ten. Leading the Rangers three to two in the sixth inning. Trout hit a home run in the first inning of that game for the Angels, his 30th of the year. CJ Crone has also homered for the Angels. In the first strike. Oh. Mike Gallego going through signs. Got five steals on him. He's five to six. Maybe that's why Tim Hudson is keeping a close eye on Tim Hudson has a good move to first, but he's a little bit slow to the plate, and that's the reason Zobris tried in the first was thrown out. A couple of other guys have attempted, but uh, when Butler was hitting, actually, Lori had stolen in the second base stolen before he fouled the ball. Pitch a little outside, one and two. You swing at that pitch, and you're a little out front, you're going to roll over on him. He's moving down and away from Vogt. And Vogt swings and misses and chased the pitch out of the strike zone. That's the first strikeout for Hudson. Tim and usually on this pitch will go to the opposite field. He took the previous one. This one, probably the fact that it ran as much as it did off the plate, looked too much like a strike, or at least close to being a strike, that he decided to swing at it. So here is the red hot Ben Zobris. Today, two singles and a run score. First pitch outside. Zobrist is six for nine in the series. He's got three singles, a double, a triple, and a homer. Yeah. 
when he swung, says Joe West. I'm surprised the home plate umpire didn't call it. But ball in the dirt and blocked by Posey, and that's why the field went to Joe West, the veteran. Seventy-seven pitches for Hudson. Rolled through the first three innings, giving up just the one run on a couple of hits, but a lot of work in the fourth inning. Put another runner on here in the fifth inning. And with a lefty and a righty warming up, Bruce Pochi's not going to—he's not going to wait around a whole lot. If there's any more trouble for Hudson. In fact, it's an interesting decision here, right? If he doesn't get Zobrist, Correct. I would not be surprised if Pochi goes to the bullpen because yep. he's got a lefty. That's right. For Reddick. And I don't think the A's would pinch it for Reddick in the fifth, although you never know, maybe. In fact, Reddick and Davis. And there's a strike. And it all depends on what happens with Zobrist. Full count. Hudson has to take off. Hudson has to get through this inning to qualify because it's he has to pitch five. Qualify for the win. And that's why this pitch probably the biggest for Hudson all day. And for Bruce Bochy. Not to mention Davis Overs at the plate. Cannon takes off and it's going to fall right into the A's dugout. Three two again, Hudson. Pulling on the run of the cap. Now he's ready. Cannon with good speed at first. So ball in the gap. In this ballpark, he should score. Takes off. And it's hit toward left field. Block goes there. Side retired. So a stranded runner. Bottom of the fifth coming up. It'll be Belts, Crawford, and Blanco. 4-3 Giants lead. Creek Casino Resort that'll be on Saturday August the 8th one of the Oakland franchise's most recognizable and iconic trademarks the white cleats were the brainchild of the Charlie Finley and have been a staple for more than four decades get your tickets for this popular giveaway day now at athletics.com or by calling 877-493-BALL how come we don't get a cap what was the giveaway hat today I thought we don't get those 
I think they knew that you probably would not wear it. Oh, wear it? I Which mean, that's, that's, yeah, that's a nice giveaway hat they had for it. Was it Madison Mumgarner and the gnome yesterday? We didn't get we didn't get any of that stuff. There it is. That's, that's, that's a nice one. Well, you look good in that, right? Yeah, that's like that hot SF Nigel. on the front, you look that would really be right up your style. Hot Nigel. Joe. That's a good one. That's kind of what Cotton Eye Joe wears, isn't it? Ray Fossey wears the Cotton Eye Joe San Francisco Giants hat. Yeah, yeah. Why not? That's a lead story right yeah. there. Cleveland Indians, I, you know. What the heck? Line foul. Well, we'll see if we can get Ray one of those hats. Is that going to water? There it is. It's got Ray's name written all over it. That ball up and away to belt. Well, if the bullpen gets active, Tim Hudson, I don't know, he's due up fourth in this inning. We'll see what Bruce Bochy decides. Bullpen's been up and active for the last two innings. Belt on a breaking ball rolls it to the backstop. Belt had an RBI single in the first and then a strikeout in the third. And he hits one in the air, right center. Reddick on the move, burns, and it's going to be Reddick. Gets over there and hung up nicely for Reddick, and it looked like he had a beat on it the whole way. I think he just got the answer. I think uh, going to the bullpen, like Jeremy Affo. Well, Reddick and Davis leading it off. First two guys left handed. And that might be a switch regardless. Hudson is due up fourth, now third, depending on what happens, but with Affo going down there, that would indicate that he may be coming in regardless. We shall see, but for Tim Hudson, five innings, he does qualify for the win against the one team he has never defeated. But it's only a one run lead. Well, it was tough to ask for a 12 out save from the bullpen, but the offense can add on to make it a little bit easier. One and one to Crawford, who has a couple of singles today. Shading his eyes, fighting it a little bit, and he caught it. Oh my. It was a wrestling match right off the bat, but he made the play. That's a great job using his glove. He has his sunglasses, and then right at the last instant, looked like the ball came out of the sun. Watch his glove change direction right there when it comes out of the sun, and had a snow cone, and a Big, big sigh. And oh, oh. I don't know that his son could shade his eyes that much. You can see the sun glaring off the sunglasses, but a great catch and could have been a triple with Crawford's speed. So oh. two outs here at Blanco. He's looking for another inning where they keep the Giants off the board, get back in the dugout. Nianza comes out into the on deck circle. Oh. It's only two. To give Otero credit and Scribner's done his job so far. And on three pitches, Blanco strikes out. And no, hold on, you're saying a foul ball and it hit the ground. <laughs> so Vote doesn't agree. Scribner. He'll put his hands up as well. Uh, let's see if Joe West wants to get involved with this one. He said he's got to ask, and it would be a corner, especially Joe West would be the one. And if Herman Downey says no, he's not going to ask. And he's got him, but he's not going to say. He's, it looked like he completely flailed at it. Ball hit the ground. Side swing, see if he hit it.
That's a complete miss. No, just a curveball bounced and it's curling down. He said it hit something. So the count remains 0 and 2. He's not waving. He's asking for four baseballs. Mike Davis picks it up, steps in the bag. Blanco retired, so that's a three up, three down inning for Evan Scribner. Sixth inning coming up. Good ball game, 4 3. Western Conference rivals, the Vancouver Whitecaps, the home of the authentic, the home of the authentic Earthquakes fan is CSN. So we'll look forward to that. Again, coming up right after our game, and then after A's post-game live. Touching moment down by the Giants dugout, Eddie Montague. Went over and brought Joe West over to congratulate him. It's an official game, so he officially is umpiring. And thought that's nice. That was nice. So Jeremy Affel, the veteran left hander, comes in. 14th year in the big leagues for Affel. Eighth with the Giants. And when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune up the oil change tune up. And small expert. So AFL facing Reddick, Davis, and Lori. And there's a strike on the outside. He's staying ninth in the batting order, so it would indicate that uh, double switch might occur. Then line for Tim Hudson. One strikeout. That was last inning. Wow. He struck out Stephen Vogt in the pitch out of the strike zone. Nice no walks, which is not surprising. Good curve by AFL. AFL. Good, good reliever for a long time. Struggling this year, though. He was on the disabled list earlier this year. Trying to get back into form. Another curve, looped foul up over the screen. Drew Pomeranz loosening up. If that means anything to you, he's scheduled to start on Wednesday at Dodger Stadium. One two to Reddick is a fastball outside. They only threw an inning in two thirds Thursday and the spot start that was for Kazmir when he was traded. So maybe 44 pitches, maybe you want to build it up a little bit and still let him start. I mean, that's no idea on Thursday he's going to throw just a few pitches because he had not built up his arm strength yet.
Now, both managers are really, really leaning on their bullpen in this game. George Contos is throwing a right hander. It could be FL may only pitch to two guys. Who knows? 2 2 pitch. He's hit well. Left center field. Blanco back there and he makes the catch. So Reddick is retired for the first out here in the top of the sixth inning. And now Ike Davis will hit. Contos. He's loosening up like he's got a guy that he's going to face. And both these managers very good at the mix and match and using the bullpen. First pitch at the knees for a strike to Davis, who has grounded out and then he doubled and scored in the fourth. Well, if you're going to save your your extra men for pinch hitters. The Giants are limited as how many they have. They only have four on the bench. As a result of that, you may not see a double switch if he Contos does come in. Maybe he would be just getting one batter or however many he would be facing. Pitcher following Lori. He sets up outside and it's hit on the ground. Crawford backhand straightens up throws throws high and it's right into the dugout and the A's are going to get a runner at second base Crawford had time but he just airmailed it and the A's will take it so it's a single and an E6 trying to throw over the top he had enough time to crow hop okay he's going to make a double switch but that's a play that Crawford with his strong arm usually makes without any problem. So out is the manager and Maxwell's going to left field looks like and there is the double switch. All right so we got a pitching change here in San Francisco the A's have the tying run at second base. Park Park presented by Nyla Ball, Adams, and Abadur. This event sells out annually. And limited tickets remain. For information and tickets, visit athletics.com slash Bark at the Park today. So, Brent Laurie steps in. He's going to face the new pitcher, George Contos. Contos 2-1 with a 1.51 ERA. Busy 47th appearance this year. Tying run at second base here in the top of the sixth inning. So the double switch has Justin Maxwell going in the game in left field for Blanco. Maxwell will hit ninth. Contos checks the first pitch. He's bounced slowly. 
Duffy, the third baseman, has it. Throws quickly, and they got him on a very close play at first base. Well, Lori, I gotta believe Lori could be close to being the fastest right-handed hitter from home plate to first base. He's as fast as Trout, I think, getting from home to first. Yeah, he gets out of the box quickly, and he he runs hard, and he is fast, and a lot of energy, and he uses it going down the line. Sam Fulby trying to do it. Lori could not do anything. Got to advance the runner, and advance the runner is important because if nothing else, an out to the right side would have put Ike Davis at second. And he could not score on the base hit that Laurie hit in his last at bat. That ball was to right field. So full in the pitcher spot. And the first pitch is a slider down the middle. Nobody is holding Ike Davis at second. He's looking back at Crawford, but Crawford's not really paying that much attention. And typically with two outs, nobody does. So he can get huge lead and be prepared because if there's a base hit. He shocked if Gags does not send him from third. And that one a fastball at 91. Knee high strike. So he's looking for a two out hit. They got one from Laurie in the fourth inning. Now it's one and two. Mike Trout just hit a grand slam. Angels lead the Rangers eight to two in the seventh inning. So a couple of home runs for Trout today. Number 30 and 31. Outfield. Straight away for full. And a one two pitch. Down swimming, a slider down and in. So Contos gets out of the jam, and the A's do not score. Bottom of the six coming up 4 3 San Francisco. Raymond two to nothing and then an opposite field hit following a hit and run with runner going to second base that was Blanco and then the A's coming back Reddick scoring on a swap pitch close play at the plate Reddick did that and Brett Laurie with a solid base hit to right field bringing in Zophers and this blooper the one that landed in center field off the glove of panic and that's where it stands now four to three Giants leading Tim Hudson looking for the win against the A's. He's got three of the 12 outs he needed for a bullpen save. He's trying to come back still down by one run. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. Mobilizing your world. So when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune-up. It's your oil change tune-up and smog expert. So indeed, Drew Pomeranz comes in. 
Well, Pomerantz pitched Thursday. He would have Friday off, throw aside on Saturday. But if he's not pitching till Wednesday, this could be an additional side session. Get an inning out of him. Yeah, that's just the manager wants. Out of it, and, and really, it's just an exaggerated side session, and one that's a little bit more intense than just throwing down on the bullpen. Facing Justin Maxwell, first time seeing Maxwell in this series. First year with the Giants. It's helped for Pomerantz to try to build up the arm streak, especially if it's going to stay back in the in the rotation. That's it is going to be there after his performance. Pagan to follow and then panic here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Jammed. Hit foul. Scribner with two good innings gives up just one hit. That was the Posey double. No walks, no strikeouts. So Otero and Scribner have done exactly what Bob Melvin was hoping. Keep the Giants off the board and allow the East to get back in it, and that's what has happened. The two pitches down and in. So full count. So the payoff pitch here it comes. And a fastball up and away, and Maxwell chased it. Well, he chased ball four. Pomeranz will take it, and he gets the strikeout. So Brandon Belt did the same thing, swinging at a pitch out of the strike zone, and maybe for Maxwell the same on the three and two, but it is aggressive to go after a fastball when they're expected on three and two. One of the, the predictable pitches, if you will, three and oh, and three and two in some cases. So now to the top of the order in Pagan. Pagan has walked and scored, singled and scored, and hit a fly ball to center field. Blue Jays leading the members five to three in the seventh inning. That one called strike. Stephen Bowe setting up inside for a fastball. Still, Pomerantz leaving them outside. Not able to, at least to this point, fire inside. And at least he's throwing it hard. Well, today in New York, Zach Greinke got the start with the consecutive scoreless inning streak of 43 and two thirds. So. Not that far behind the record of Oral Hershiser, but Oral can sit back and relax. As Greinke gave up a run in the third inning of that game. He ended up giving up a couple of runs. So it was all said and done. Greinke's scoreless inning streak stops at 45 and two thirds innings. Not too shabby. And that's won that game three to two over the Dodgers. Broken bat, Canna coming in. He should get there, and he will. So two away here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And now the second place hitter, Panic, will hit. And another hitter aggressively going after a pitch, a fastball. And <laughs> the gun swung so hard he broke his bat. But fastball, he got it. And well, it says a lot about the fastball problem that's just thrown today. So lefty on lefty here. And a good fastball right in there for a strike. And a go for three. Two for 11 in the series. Both his hit hits coming in yesterday's game. Trying to have 
Three second consecutive, three up, three down in. Got Steven Vogt. Let's hope he's okay. Steven Vogt has said he's so happy to get the opportunity to play at the major league level. He'll take anything off his body, any time, and he's taken a few of them. That one off the mask, but help from Kerwin Danny holding them up a little bit. See if he kept a statistic on how many times he got hit, he may be hitting about 800. He'd be leading the league in hits, right? That's right. But not the kind that you want. Steven says, I can rest in the offseason. I can hit the body well and figure the one day where he'll feel great be the first day of spring training next year. Other than that, just deal with it. The two breaking ball blocked by Hope. Giants bullpen is quiet, so Pantos will go back out there. Well, they've survived the weekend, and that's good. At home plate. So the count remains one and two. Will fly to LA tomorrow. Giants stay home and host the Brewers for three games. The liner softly hits Simeon on the backhand side, retired. So Pomeranz has a three up, three down inning, and we are headed to the seventh. It's the Giants four and the A's three. Giants lead seventh inning here at AT&T Park. A's need a, a win to salvage a game in this series. Inter League baseball been going on since 1997. So I think we're used to it now. Maybe not. So George Cantos, who got the final two outs in the sixth. Faces Simeon, Canna, and then the leadoff man, Billy Burns, first pitch in the first strike. Simeon hitting in the eighth spot. It's jam there, pops a foul back.
Simeon in this series looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 8. High fastball again, foul straight back. I think this is a big year for Marcus Simeon getting a chance to play every day as he has at shortstop. And not many times you get the big league level after spring training. And ongoing work, but he's put a lot of work in with Ron Washington, Mike Gallego, and he's getting much, much better at shortstop, which we have seen. And just try to continue swinging the bat, but every year for him, getting the experience, he's going to be better. Trade in the offseason and Samarja was acquired. Now Samarja's name being mentioned throughout baseball as a possible piece that a club would like to hit. Toronto's actually talking about him. John Gibbons, their manager, Blue Jays talking in Oakland about the need of a starting pitcher and how they might be going after one. Samarja, free agent after this season, might be the one that they think about. He is on the hot rumor mill. Yeah. Two and two. Slider again, a good take by Simeon. So a full count. On the slider that Simeon swung and missed in the ninth inning yesterday against Casilla, and a big swing, and that's one that eventually, over time, he'll be taking. He's aggressive. He's young, and not surprised to see him swing. Had to pitch out of the strike zone yesterday in the game in a one run game. So payoff pitch. He's looking for a base runner. And he got him swinging. So second strikeout for Contos. And he struck out two of the three batters that he has faced. Through a 3 2 slider that was a strike. And it was a strike. It was a strike with the pitch and it was a strike with the swing. But it was not a. Pitch trying to get him to chase is just one that he figured if he's going to take it, it's going to be strike three anyway. So Canna will step up. Canna, his third at bat. He's got a fly ball in the left field and a single. So the Giants will get a lefty and a righty up. Lopez and Strickland. High pop up. Duffy over and it's going to be well in the seats. And Lopez. Sure that's for the likes of Vogt, Reddick, and Davis. He's have used Butler. And it worked out. He had an RBI single. Smolinski, Fegley, still on the bench. Right to the second baseman, Panic, for the second out. So the A's with. As I look, yeah, just Smolinski and Fegley, the position players left on the bench. Both unfold have been used in the pitcher spot. Canna on the early double switch. So here's Burns who has hit three fly balls to left field. The one in the first inning it was a, a nice play by Gregor Blanco to start the game. First pitch slider in the dirt. Well, it's good to see Billy Burns back in the lineup. After what happened on Friday. Billy's just happy they're not talking about his injury. That he has to answer all the questions about them. But he'll pinch it yesterday and able to play today. And I would think probably back in the lineup on a consistent basis. A one and one to Burns. One for seven in the series. Fouled back just below us. 
And in case you missed it Friday, good. Because Billy didn't miss it. State of the game got a hard hit ball to first base, RBI to drive in a run. So Burns trying to fight back one to the count. Again, foul to the screen. Bullpens have the pitchers throwing towards home plate. That ball was bobbled, headed towards shortstop, but thrown back in by Duffy or back towards the bullpen. See that in Tampa and St. Petersburg that. The bullpens have the pitchers throwing towards the home plate area. Ball gets away, usually comes rolling that direction. Another one two pitch is dribbled foul. One hop into the Giants' dugout. Bumgarner makes the play. Sticking around just in case they want to pinch it. You say, I mean, that's, you're not even joking about that. I know. <laughs> it is an extra bat on the bench. So I'm doing what he did it last year, a former first baseman turned pitcher. So Burns steps out, now steps back in. Pitch number 20 coming up from Contos. And again, reach for poke foul just into the seats down the left field line. And Billy Burns doing what he does best. If not swinging early in the count, he still, as the at bat goes on, does a great job of fouling pitches back. Going outside the Burns. And again, foul back. Hard for Billy to take pitches and still think that in time he's going to remain aggressive, but he helps an idea of the strike zone. Remember, he's a left handed hitter for just a short amount of time. More of a right handed hitter, became a switch hitter, but. I think from the left side, he just swings pretty much at everything that comes close. That one wasn't close. So two and two the count. Vote would be next. Play by the Giants second baseman Joe Panic as they get Burns on a close play. Seventh inning stretch coming up from the Coliseum from the AT&T Park.
18 for a Martin McGuire bobblehead giveaway driven by Chevrolet. Big Mac will be on hand as we honor his A's career. The all-time A's home run leader helped the A's reach three straight World Series from 1988 through 1990 and win the title in 1989. For tickets, call 877-493-BALL or you can visit athletics.com. We hope you do. See Mac on Tuesday and Wednesday, along with Don Maddox, the manager of the Los Angeles Dodgers, the Cunningham their pitching coach. Now see I haven't seen him since he joined the Dodgers. He is. I saw the Dodgers in 2012 at the Coliseum. And Drew Pomerantz remains in the game. So we shall see what develops in the upcoming series in Los Angeles. You know, I just think, think that 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 they could come back with Chavez because he pitched so short. I mean, they could, the off day Monday. I mean, if they decided to do something, yeah. they could. Right now, they need bodies in the bullpen. That's why Pomerantz maybe is pitching the second inning. Threw a lot of pitches in the sixth, and will continue facing Duffy, Posey, and Pence. So three right-handed hitters. Playing a National League Park in American League, you could come out as a pitcher on a number of occasions, some reasons. One, don't do well. There's Braveman today through just 50 pitches, an inning and a third. Or you could come out for pinch hit. You could be pitching well and come out exactly. for pinch hit. One and one to count. Duffy with the two run homer and an RBI single. Five for 11 in the series. It's jam there shoots that one right over the A's dugout. Three hour time change back to Cooperstown and four inductees today, right now, are saying, What a relief yeah. it is because the Hall of Famers who were introduced prior to the four inductees today, to a man, they say the hardest part is delivering the speech, the most rewarding and relaxing is the years to follow when they're introduced. Sure. And and just go sit and enjoy listening to the new inductees. You can see in the days today that uh, Sandy Colfax was there. Mm -hmm. So several of them being introduced. Nolan Ryan. There's some that go every year. Some that will pick their years. But uh, you can see some of the great pitchers and players of the past there. Pomeranz throws out Duffy for out number one. One, one Marshall, of course, a giant. The Dominican Danny, as they called him, had to be extremely happy to see another Dominican born player, Pedro Martinez. Enter Cooperstown, very deserving. One Marshall, of course, thanks to him, Orlando Cepeda was there. What if Gaylord was there wearing all the logos from the uniforms he played? <laughs> Padna. Well, they go to the old timers games and he'd have like a vest with all sure. the logos. Here. Why not? That's right. You get in the Hall of Fame, you can do anything you want. Simeon dives, got it, and dropped it. And I think he would have. Yeah. Thrown out Posey. Posey does not run well. He's got a little bit of a tight hamstring from what we've been told. So he would have had a chance. And Simmons got up ready to transfer. And when he put the transfer, it popped out. And you could see his reaction because he probably thought got a chance. And that would have been an excellent play. And with his strong arm, probably had a chance to get him. But Posey gets his fourth hit of the day. Eight Giants in a row had been retired before that hit. And there's Hunter Pence, a little bit inside. There's three singles and a double indeed for Posey. Hunter Pence, 0 for 2 today. 4 for 9 in the series. We have four hits on Friday night. It's 
now with 34 hits in this series. Not close. So two and one the count. Nobody's in the bullpen for the A's. Mainly because after Pence, you got three consecutive, well, make it two consecutive left handed hitters, and then the pitcher spot if it went that far. So you'd like to have Pomerantz face the left handed hitters, Belts, and possibly Crawford. Looks like Lopez will indeed be coming in in the eighth inning. For the A's, it'll be Vote. Zobrist and Reddick. So two lefties and a switch hitter. Two two pitch. Pence, who most of the time is very aggressive, but is able to lay off that pitch. So full cap. Is he not going anywhere? And it's fouled again. So Otero, Scribner, and Pomeranz have been terrific today. To so another 3-2. Was he not going anywhere? And another foul ball. This one right to the screen. I always like to see aggressive hitters, but if you're a pitcher and a catcher, sometimes you wonder how you're going to face them. This pass a very good job yesterday. Six solid innings. Lost the game two to one. No run support again for the fourth start. Nice play out at second, out at first, double play. Hard hit ball, but a nice play by the pitcher. And we are headed to the eighth inning. It's 4 3 Giants. Evans Scribner, an outstanding job himself from two innings. And then Drew Pomerantz. He has pitched two. Let's we'll see if he continues. Probably that's going to be all for him, but excellent double play started by Pomerantz. So 
are hot the players of the game, the bullpen for the athletics, and that's what they've needed. Still training by run. But Bob Melvin has another one. It's like a flared and loosening as a new pitcher for the Giants comes in. Javier Lopez, the sidewinding left hander, to face Volt, Zoberst, and Reddick here in the top of the eighth inning. 48th appearance for Lopez, but see just 25 in the third innings pitch. He pretty much all the time faces left handed hitters. Although we'll see what happens with Zobrist. Zobrist, of course, to switch hitter. There's a flare to get loose. One and one to Steven Vogt. Vogt has grounded out, hit a fly ball to the left, and he has struck out. 0 for 3. Lopez is 38 years old. 38 earlier this month. Sixth season with the Giants. Tough hop for Panic, but he stayed with it out on the grass. So in between hop, coming off the grass, that's not an easy play. So vote is retired. Hey, we got in-depth sports news for the Bay Area fan. Know it all with Sportsnet Central. It's coming up this evening at 6 and at 1030, and it's on our sister station, Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. We'll have all the highlights and analysis from this A's Giants game and the post-game notes from our A's insider, Joe Stiglich. And we will meet the rookies at Raiders camp. Larry Cooper, number one draft pick. So Mindy Bach, Henry Wolford will host. So Lopez will face a right handed hitter, which happens very seldom. See if Zobrist can take advantage of that. First pitch grounded toward Crawford, one step to his right. Across the diamond, two outs. And the better for was Volt once he made out, and that allowed Bruce Boach to leave the lefty in the face the switch hitting Zobrist, who grounds out on the first pitch because Reddick and Davis are due up, and the lefty stays there. Romo. In the bullpen, the right hander throws. We talked about the four inductees breathing a sigh of relief. Tim Hudson, every out, he breathes a sigh of relief as he goes just five innings. And summer starter looks for a 12 out save from his bullpen. And that's always difficult, but so far it's worked for the veteran starter. He's just four more outs to try to at least even the game. Otherwise, they still trail by one, which we don't even want to talk about those numbers. So 72 miles an hour, and if you're at all out in front or a little jumpy against Lopez, you don't have a chance. 0-2 to Reddick. And bounce to Ike Davis in the on deck circle. Blue Jays and the Mariners are 5-5 in the bottom of the ninth inning. And the Angels 11, the Rangers 4 in the 8th. So, Angels trying to salvage a game in that series. Another 0 2 pitch. And it's rolled right side. Scooped up by Panic. Quick throw to first side. Retired. So, three ground ball outs by Javier Lopez. He does it on nine pitches. Bottom of the 8th coming up. It's 4 3 Giants.
gave up seven hits in an inning in two thirds. It's been a big series for Ben Zobra, six hits total in the series. Tim Hudson trying to beat the A's for the first time in his career, and Matt Duffy has two hits and three RBIs today. So the A's will have one more shot in the top of the ninth. New pitcher is Eric O'Flaherty. He's pitcher number five on the afternoon. O'Flaherty pitched in game one of this series, pitched an inning, gave up a run, but it was unearned. So he'll face Belt, Crawford, and then the pitcher spot. And Belt goes after the first pitch. Chris Bassett. Walt Horn. That is not the baseball that was hit. Belt hits it hard. Zobris knocks it down, and his throw is not in time. Belt beats it. Zobris way out there in shallow right field, and on this particular play, he was nearing the line. So we'll see what the ruling is. Base hit in normal positioning, probably a base hit here. That's always a tough, and it seems like this official score has been giving a lot of hits. Ball hit in the heel of the glove. That's a tough hop coming off the grass. A hit. So it's a hit. Belt with two hits today. 12 now for the Giants. And here's Crawford. And Crawford belts one toward left center. But Ken is over there. So on the first pitch, Crawford is retiring. So one out, and Adrianza was in the on deck circle. He's going to now sit down, and Lopez is going to hit. Mike Davis is the hitter who's going to lead off in the ninth inning. And then when Josh Fagley pinch hits, Santiago Casillo will come out. Or when somebody pinch hits. So in this case, Lopez will probably bunt. Zelensky's a possibility. Thank you, Delaney. Basically a way for Bruce Bochy to have the A's burn a pinch hit. Yep. Oh. Player. So 0 and 1 to Lopez. Eleven career at bats. Does not have one this year. And he misses the bunt attempt, so it's 0 and 2. Maxwell is the on deck hitter. And he'll be bunting again, or at least attempting. That's the reason he is there. Does his job. That should never happen. You should never get a couple of strikes on a lefty on a lefty and give him anything that he can come close to money. We found a 95 year old baseball fan. He's an A's fan, thanks to the jersey. See that? But Ray, he's a Pearl Harbor survivor. And this is. His day at the ballpark, and he's having a great time. And he is an A's fan. He's 95 years old. So, Frank, hope you're enjoying your day at the ballpark. Thank you, thank you. That's outstanding. So, here is Justin Maxwell. So, again, in the ninth inning, it'll be Davis, Laurie, and then the pitcher spot. And the A's have. Two players on the bench, Smolinski and Fegler. So we'll see how that works out. Technically, 
because the lefty's still in the game. Two and zero to Maxwell. Slowly hit. Laurie juggles and everybody's safe. So Belt ends up at third. Well, they cut in front, of course, the runner cutting in front of him. And still should have been able to make the play and he's given an air. And I wonder, Ray, if that runner going in front didn't maybe distract yeah. him just a little bit. It's possible. He got by him and then the ball came up, but maybe tried to rush himself a little bit too much, but he made an air. Well, he did on Friday night, and that's the only error. Last seven games. So it's been a good time for the Athletics defensively. You know. Pagan hits a fly ball to right field. New team for Reddick. Side retired. So we're going to the ninth inning. Last shot for the A's. It's 4 3 Giants. The full line automaker with the longest lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. And by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. So ninth inning. And Giants with a 4-3 to three lead. And as expected, Smolinski is announced as a pinch hitter for Ike Davis. Javier Lopez out on the mound. He was ready to face Davis. With Smolinski hitting. Bruce Bochy to the mound, and he's going to go to the closer, Santiago Casilla. So it'll be Casilla against Smolinski when we come back.
ninth inning. And it's Molinsky to face Casilla leading things off. So another tight ball game, much like yesterday. Giants won two to one, and it was Casilla who saved it. He threw 15 pitches, gave up a hit, gave up a walk, and went right down to the final pitch. He's had the time run aboard. First pitch is a ball to Smolinski. And every time I see Casilla, I think of Derek Norris in 2012. First major league home run, first walk off all against Santiago Casilla. A former athletic pitcher, not a closer. With this role here. So one and one the count. Lori to follow, and again, the pitcher spot after Lori. Uh, Smolinski just said, was that a yeah, they said, was that a ball or was that a good ball? And it was called a strike. And to the backstop, two and one the count. Casilla can at times make it interesting. The news are hoping he makes it real interesting. Mahika is in the A's bullpen. And that would be because the A's tie this up. Outside corner strike and the count is two and two. I think the hitters better think about swinging this inning because the two strikes have been called have been questionable. First one inside and this one off the plate or at least close enough off the plate to call the strike. So it would indicate Chris Smolinski is the pinch hitter to be swinging. Two, two pitch here it is I and mean, it's not close and a full count. Defense straight away for Smolinski. It's a late call. Wow. And it's a very late. The picture is in the set. It's not like you see it's taking a lot of time either. Wow. One three and two is a fastball. And that one misses badly, and it's a leadoff walk. And the first one, the one with the timeout, was right down the middle. So it overthrew the next one. So here's Lori. Funny you bring up that Norris home run, and that, that game, of course, was at the Coliseum, but that was also a series where the Giants won the first two games, right. and the A's were oh. close to getting swept. Same situation here. It was a three run walk off. Now Fegley out to pinch it for the pitcher spot. So that would be. See if Fegley stayed well. Yeah, if the A's do play it. Any more beyond this inning, then Volk could go to first Fegley behind the plate because Ike Davis is out. But now the A's would love to have that opportunity. Lori today, one for three, and an RBI single back in the fourth inning. And there's a base hit center field. So the A's are in business here in the top of the ninth inning. A walk and a single. And now Fegley comes up. Well, a pretty good pitch to hit, and he did. Right back up the middle, and. So it's first and second, and you would not bunt. 
down by a run with one on, but with two, you might think about it, but not in this situation. And plus, A's pitchers are really aren't an adept at bunting in the first place. So, Fegley trying to keep it going with A's down by a run and two on. And Strickland hustles down. Simeon is the on deck hitter. Giants corner infielders in some. And Fegley swinging away, and the first pitch is a strike. Wow. Rodriguez heading down to join Mahika. Fegley asking Kerwin Danley, as did Smolensky. Kerwin Danley was starting this game not feeling well. He's there's some question whether he would even be able to umpire, but he has stayed in this game approaching three hours. So Fegley, the pinch hitter, looking for a base hit, tie this game up. That one is line foul down the left field line, just out ahead of it a little bit. In this case of Fegley looking for a little bit more than he actually got to be that quick and hit it on the end of the bat. Bullet foul. And he's got to protect against the hard slider that Casilla likes to throw, but Casilla also has to be concerned about throwing it so much out of the strike zone that it becomes a wild pitch. So put two runners in scoring position. Lori doing exactly what you should at first base, getting off as far as the first baseman's off the bat. Not close, way outside. So one and two. Yeah, that's that's a a big move. I mean, there's really nothing the Giants can do. I guess you could hold him, but well, you just want it out. And if there's a ground ball, Lori can either get to second quickly and prevent a double play if the ball's in the hole. They may not have a place. So he's doing what you should do, and it's good to see Ty Waller instructing him to do that. And a swinging strikeout by Fegley. Chase the ball, one out. And he didn't stay back on that slider. It came back with another one. I don't know if he was thinking fastball, but definitely fooled on the pitch that did not break as much as the previous slider. This one, though, the change of speed enough to get him. So one away, and here's Simeon. Simeon is 0 for 3. Couple of ground outs and a strikeout. Runner takes off the third. Throw to third, not close. And Smolinski is out. And it looked like he was out by quite a bit. And that's out number two. And on top of that, Lori still at first. And maybe the Lori not going right. to second, maybe yep. just as big or close to it as the out at third. Not even close. And he's looking back, and I don't know why he was looking in towards the plate. Smolensky was. And they called it a strike. That's what uh, Santiago was waiting to see. So the count is 0-1. And now there's two outs, and Lori's at first. Or he's got a pretty good lead at first. You need to have some type of mix up at that point in the game, and it looked like there was. Oh, and Smolenski looked back, and I don't know. Signs are usually not that difficult, and I don't know that a hit and run would be put on, which it is very rare. Sliders outside, so one and one can. <laughs> one time, and we have seen hitters with great jumps by base runners swing at pitches and foul them off. And the one time that Molenski had a horrible jump, it was taken by Simeon. Please need a ball in the gap. And that one to the backstop. And a foul ball. So now it's one and two, and the crowd of over 42,000 on its feet. Ace fans looking for a ball in the gap. Giants fans looking for a third out.
to see is ready. Lori, the runner at first, and here's the pitch. Down and away, 2 2. Simeon was the last batter yesterday. First and second, three and two count, got a three two slider out of the out of the strike zone badly thrown. But good enough for Casilla to get a strike out. So Casilla. Check to the runner. Lori runs, and the pitch is popped up. Posey coming back, but it'll be into the seat. So Lori on the move on two and two. So ninth inning tension yesterday, same thing today. Two pitch slider way outside, and now full count. Lori will be taken off. That'll help. And he's got to be thinking yesterday, he got a 3 2 slider out of the strike zone. He swung and missed on a check swing, actually. But he get it again today. It's going to see a go back to the fans' ball. There he goes. And the pitch is a fastball. Hit foul into the second level. And he swung like he was looking slider, which you have to do. You have to protect with two strikes and tough to be overly aggressive in this count when I mean, you really cannot 100% be sure you're going to get a fastball. So we'll do 3 2 again. The outfielders playing deep. Lori runs, and here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. He stuck him out, and the Giants have swept the A's this weekend here at AT&T Park. So, for the second day in a row, Simeon strikes out to end the ball game. And today, it looked like a fastball from Santiago Casilla. A little bit up, but. That's the best thing to do. Go after it. Had a little cut action on it, and enough to get the strikeout. So it took three hours and four minutes. Forty-two thousand and thirty-four were in attendance. Tim Hudson gets the win, and he beats the A's for the first time. Casilla gets his twenty-sixth save. So final score: it's the San Francisco Giants four and the Oakland A's three. You've been watching A's baseball on Comcast Sportsnet California, part of the NBC Sports Group. Don't go away. He's post-game live with Brody and Ben. Starts right now.